hi welcome in this uh, tutorial i'm going to model flood uh, susceptibility using uh, the weighted linear combination method uh, we are going to use the uh, flood frequency from the grc data set land cover map derived from the esa global land cover map for 2020 elevation and slope uh, derived from the SRTM data set distance to open water areas which is uh, derived from the ESA global land cover map and height above nearest drainage uh, which is derived from the merit hydro data set please uh, take note that uh, this uh, tutorial is only for training and uh, demonstration purposes only so first uh, we are going to uh, select our region of interest so for this case, we are going to, uh, to use uh, Mozambique as a case study. The next, uh, we are going to load uh, the ESA Global Land Cover Map and uh, reclassify it into four classes. So here, we are going to reclassify into class 1, which uh, represents trees and shrublands. Class 2, grassland and cropland. Class 3, beautiful and barren. Class 4, open water wetlands and uh, mangroves. Please take note that uh, class 1 represents low flooding susceptibility while class 4 represents high, cl high, high flooding susceptibility. The next we are going to, uh, to clip uh, the map and uh, display it. Following that uh, we are going to load in the SRTM uh, uh, elevation data set. Then we are also going to classify it into the following uh, classes. So class 1 represents elevation between 1,200 and 2,600 meters. Uh, class 2 uh, represents uh, elevation between 651 to 1,200 meters. Uh, class 3 represents elevation between 300 and 650 meters. And class 4 represents elevation between uh, 0 uh, and uh, 300 meters. Please take note that uh, this, uh, this, this this reclassification uh, is only uh, for this uh, uh, tutorial okay uh, uh, following that we are just going to uh, display our uh, reclassified uh, elevation uh, map uh, next uh, we are going to derive slope from the uh, SRTM elevation and clip it to the uh, boundary and then we are going to reclassify the slope uh, into the following classes class one uh, represent uh, uh, the slope uh, between 19 and 78 uh, degrees class two represents a slope uh, between 5 and 18 degrees class three represents slope between 2.5 and 4 degrees and lastly, uh, class 4 represents slope between 0 and 2.4 degrees. Next, we just uh, uh, upload uh, the reclassified uh, slope map. Uh, following that, uh, we are going to uh, uh, create a mask for open water areas only. So, for, uh, so here... This uh, one represent uh, the open uh, water areas and uh, zero the other classes. Then we will use uh, uh, the uh, Euclidean distance function in order to compute a distance to open water areas. Right here I've defined uh, uh, the, 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 the distance to about uh, 10,000 uh, meters. Right, uh, following that, we are going to reclassify the distant to open areas to open water areas uh, into the following uh, classes. So we have class 1 between uh, 800, 801 and 10,000 meters, class 2 between 400 and 800 meters, uh, class 3 between 200 and 400 meters, and then class 4 between 0 and 200 meters. Right, uh, next uh, we are going to uh, load the Merit Hydro Global uh, data set. Then from that uh, data set, we are going to select a uh, height above nearest drainage. The 
height uh, above nearest drainage map uh, contains a vertical distance uh, between uh, a location and its nearest uh, stream. So this uh, data set is important uh, because it captures uh, local variations in topography, uh, which is important for flood mapping. Following that, we are just simply going to reclassify uh, the height above or nearest drainage into four into the following four classes. And then finally, uh, we are going to uh, calculate uh, flood frequency from the GRC surface water dataset. Please take note that uh, I'm just using flood frequency here as a proxy for rainfall intensity and duration. If you want, you can use a, a rainfall intensity direction, a, a rainfall intensity duration, which which is also derived from the, which can also be derived from the GRC surface water data set. All right, so this is uh, the, the code uh, for creating uh, the mask only for the uh, water areas, which represents uh, the flood frequency uh, uh, between uh, the year 2000 and uh, 2022. Okay, next. We are now going to model flood uh, susceptibility using the weighted linear combination uh, method. So here simply, I'm just uh, going to uh, combined all the uh, factors which I have uh, reclassified and then next we are going to assign the weights. Uh, please take note that here we are just using uh, the arbitrary uh, weights for the model because uh, uh, we don't have uh, the expert knowledge about the factors influencing uh, flood susceptibility in Mozambique. However, uh, you can use uh, the analytical hierarchy process uh, method in order to generate weights. Uh, I will leave uh, the reference uh, in the tutorial so that you can uh, read more about the analytical hierarchy process. So these are the weights that I've signed. Uh, these weights range uh, between uh, uh, 1 and, uh, and 10. But uh, you should uh, calculate the weights so that uh, they can range uh, between 0 and 1. Okay, so for the purpose of this training, these weights are enough. So after that, we're just going to uh, display uh, the flood uh, susceptibility map. All right, so this is all about uh, the code. So if you run this code, you are going to generate uh, the flood uh, susceptibility map. So this is the map that I've already uh, created. It's showing areas uh, which are susceptible to uh, flooding. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, this has just been a, a very uh, a short uh, tutorial on showing how, how you can uh, uh, model flood susceptibility uh, in a Google Earth engine. Uh, please uh, uh, subscribe uh, to my channel uh, if you find these videos useful. Uh, see you in the next uh, tutorial. Thank you.